you know, for me, just just being able to interview a, almost a quarter of a million people over time is it, extraordinary. It's never really happened before. Um, and and to have um, an end size so significant that we might be able to look at people of all great religious traditions and, and people with no religious tradition at all, um, this has never really happened before. You know, for the last number of years, I've been studying um, incarcerated lifers, people who are not getting out of prison. And um, one of the things that's been so astonishing is to see how many of these people are actually flourishing. And if you can go to the darkest places in our society and find people that are flourishing over time, um, I think you have a story worth telling. The longitudinal aspect of it is an incredibly important contribution because most studies are done just you know, one time with a random sample of individuals from a, in a particular country. You can learn something about a point in time, but to see the evolution of their attitudes, their changes, their behaviors, um, and their perceptions of various things and truly about how they are flourishing over a period of time and what are the antecedents and, and what are the things that seem to help or hurt their ability to flourish and the environment in which they are flourishing can truly be possible only when you're tracking the same people over a period of time. And as Byron was saying, the building such a longitudinal panel has never happened at this scale uh, in some of the projects, uh, they have been develop, designing and developing um, technological tools like apps and video games and and different uh, to and introduce them in the intervention programs to promote character development. So the use of technology in this research is a big topic that we have been that we are going to be discussing, and also. Um, Research shows that promoting character development early in in early age is <clears throat> is being associated with uh, decreasing of mental health problems. So we are going to have one specific conversation spot around the role of character strength uh, in mental health and well being, which is uh, one of the things that we want to expand in Latin America. Um, I think one of the most exciting pieces of research that we're going to be focusing on is really an emerging theme in the literature that we're getting better at characterizing individuals and how individuals are different from each other. And traditionally, I think in, it, when researching children and young people, we tend to group them together, um, often according to quite arbitrary sets of criteria, and then explore how the group develops over time. And I think one of the exciting things is that we're getting better at, at understanding how the individual develops um, at a kind of cognitive level, at a behavioral level, and at a brain level. And, and I think that that is a key step forward to fully trying to capture the breadth of diversity. So the question is, why are markets set up in Africa, and indeed in other parts of the world, that allow the privileged few to get access to nice structures, well-established system of healthcare, but that many don't? And we need to find a route to having those benefits and those benefits of formalization broaden to the vast majority of people. And why are they not buying into that system today is one of the critical questions. The system has not been designed to support uh, the, the ordinary workers. It's been designed to support sort of prof the professional class in the cities. And that therefore, we need to find a way of structuring markets structuring the system so that everybody says this works for me and I want to participate in a regularized way as opposed to participating on the margins where so many do today. We, we see listening as um, as an avenue to create human flourishing so because human flourishing is an outcome uh, but how do you create it you cannot you, you can just tell people flourish or connect so we need a practical uh, tool ingredient in order to help um, all of us uh, connect to one another and in order to to really flourish. So we really hope that this workshop will will um, be a first among many in order to shed the light on listening as a very essential um, antecedent or ingredient, um, a practical one of promoting uh, human flourishing. So human flourishing is quite a broad construct with a lot of science from different fields. 
And what Inner Development Goals contributes with is a, a new framework. It's a co-created framework where in, in total there is more than 4,500 people, scientists, experts, practitioners that have contributed to see how can we make human flourishing or human development more accessible and easier to understand. And now we have other countries, cross-sectoral, both from government and from um, uh, NGOs, private sector, who are interested in working with this on a really broad scale. So we have, we have India, we have Rwanda, Zambia, Colombia, and Albania, who are coming together here with us uh, in Kigali to work on this and to sign commitments to start nodes and join the global IDG alliance. So I'm very happy about that. And so when we start to look around the world, we have some preliminary data from other projects that suggests that oftentimes um, people are flourishing in, um, in very important ways, even in very um, materially resource poor environments. So um, I think we'll, we, we need to lean into this with a better data resource like the Global Flourishing Study. And we need to have friends along the way who can help us make sense of what we're finding. And so that's the reason for a community of practice kind of approach. We're pursuing truth in the company of friends.